Um, projections tend to be described in terms of the, the surface from which they're constructed and this is um, a way of conceiving of the construction of a projection. They're not really done this way. Again, a projection is kind of a mathematical transformation that's applied to coordinates and locations to make them fit a particular um, transformation to make them you know, translatable rather onto a flat surface. So the three surfaces that are, re are referred to when we work with projections are the cylinder, the cone, and then this flat surface which we refer to as azimuthal or sometimes orthographic. Um, the significance of the surfaces that we're looking at here is to imagine that we placed a cylinder around this globe, for example, and then projected a, a light from the center of the globe and the shadows that would be cast by those um, lines of latitude and longitude, the graticule, would essentially be cast onto the surface of the cylinder and then you could unroll the cylinder and you'd end up with something like this. Um, the significance of the cylinder though is that the way that it interacts or the way that it's oriented around the globe affects the product that you get. So that what we see here is that you can imagine the cylinder is kind of touching the globe around the equator. That's where the line of tangency would happen. And what's significant about that is that that's actually where it's going to be least distorted. And what happens is, as you move further away from that line of tangency, the surface of the cylinder is further away from the globe surface. And that's where the distortion begins to increase. The value of the cylindrical projection is that it tends to preserve the angles, uh, which again, in the case of the Mercator projection, which is a cylindrical projection, uh, you can see again, as I explained earlier, that has a purpose. Conic projections um, work where the line of tangency actually sits a little higher. So the cone kind of sits on the earth so that you can imagine it's kind of touching about right here. And that line of tangency means that you're going to end up with less distortion around that area. So what happens is you tend to want to use conic projections when you're going to be working with areas that are in the mid-latitudes, like where the U.S. is. Contrast that with a cylindrical where that is going to be along the equator, at least the way it's oriented right now. Finally, we have a azimuthal projection or a orthographic, sometimes it's called this flat surface, and rather than touching along a line on the Earth, it touches at a point of tangency. And the azimuthal or orthographic projections tend to be used for the polar regions, but they can be used anywhere. And the idea here is that um, they work because the point of tangency is the center of attention in a map constructed this way, and they can be used to produce maps where the direction, excuse me, the distances from that point of tangency to anywhere else are fairly accurate or can be fairly accurate. So it serves a very specific purpose. So cylindrical projections, um, there's a lot of different kinds of them, uh, and they can be constructed in a variety of ways where the cylinder is oriented this way where it's tangent with the equator or a transverse orientation so that the cylinder is uh, tangent with a, a meridian or a line of longitude. Um, the significance, again, is in terms of what you're trying to achieve, where you're trying to minimize the distortion and try to focus the attention. Again, there's all kinds of projections that are created this way, and when you encounter them, sometimes they'll actually have the name of the projection type in the name. So like the cylindrical equal area down here, obviously the cylindrical part refers to the, fact, the way that it was constructed. But the other part that's important here is this other part of the name, which is equal area. And what that means is it's telling you what property has been preserved in this particular projection. And so that tells you that this projection was constructed with a cylinder, but it was also constructed in such a way that the areas should be fairly accurate. It won't necessarily be true across the entire map, but more so than an, an comparable projection. Same thing with equirectangular. Okay? So the equi has, gonna, has to do with the distance in this case. Um, and again, this is a reference to the, to the way that the um, projection was constructed, although you could never really go off the names. And uh, to be uh, fair, to be honest rather, it is more appropriate if you're looking at a projection to read the metadata about that. The documentation explains how the projection was constructed and how it can be used uh, safely. Uh, conic projection, same kind of issue used in various different applications. Again, 
typically in mid latitudes, um, if, at least when it's oriented in this way, where it sits uh, with its um, point over the poles. Um, and here too, you'll see the na within the name of the projection a uh, clue as to how it uh, as to what it does. So the conic obviously references to the, to the cone, um, and here the word conformal uh, refers to the fact that it preserves the shapes. Conformality is a reference to the shapes that are that are preserved, uh, and usually angles to some extent as well. Um, with a conic projection, you'll see one of the virtues of it is that it tends to mimic the curvature of the Earth a little bit. So if you look on this lower left projection, you can see how the lines of longitude converge within this particular projection. And that's, um, again, a little closer to how a globe behaves. So you can preserve certain qualities by doing that. So in the upper one, you get this conformal conic, which preserves shape. And the lower one, you see equal area, again, referencing to the fact that it's preserving the relative sizes of the area, so those are somewhat accurate. Uh, the azimuthal, or sometimes orthographic, or sometimes stereographic projection, again, is uh, created with this flat surface where the point of tangency is a point, and that is the center of attention within this projection. And from that point, you can measure out distances uh, somewhat accurately, more so than in other uh, types of projection. So this all might sound very esoteric, and it, and it kind of is, to tell you the truth, uh, but it is very real because we deal with different kinds of projections all the time, and we actually have the power to manipulate them depending on our needs. Uh, and you do need to manipulate them because anytime you take a globe and you make it into a flat map representation, you inherently are transforming it. And if you're transforming it, you have to be aware of what parameters you're choosing. Uh, because there's going to be distortion that cannot be avoided. So the question is, what kind of distortion are you willing to tolerate, and what qualities do you need to preserve? Uh, and so those are essentially the questions that are that are uh, brought up when we're dealing with projections. Uh, in a GIS environment, um, projections come up as a practical matter in kind of two scenarios. Um, one is that you come across data, usually a shape file of some sort, where the projection information hasn't been recorded or labeled properly. And so when you bring it into the GIS, the GIS system doesn't know what to do with it, and so it won't line up with the other data. Um, if it's GIS data, it has to have uh, coordinate information, or rather, it has units that are built into it, but the computer just doesn't know what units they are, it doesn't know whether they're degrees or whether they're meters, and it doesn't know how to treat the data. And so in that case, you have to do a little bit of sleuthing, a little detective work to figure out you know, what, is this, what is the likely projection or coordinate system that we're working with here. Um, and that can be dangerous, of course. Ideally, you should have the documentation and, or be able to call somebody and say, what is this thing, so you can fix that problem. Uh, the second uh, practical consideration when it comes to projections is the simple fact that you can manipulate them. And so if you are working with mapping, um, particularly mapping large areas, you know, we're talking regional or larger, say, um, for the state of Massachusetts or larger, in that case, um, you have the ability to manipulate the parameters of the projection so that it's centered uh, on the area of interest and you are controlling uh, where the distortion is happening on the map. Um, this is not done, it's easily done, but it shouldn't be done lightly because you, you need to be a little more aware of what exactly you are doing. So actually the first scenario is more likely, but in any case, it is, a, it is a, um, an issue that anybody working with a GI system is likely to encounter at some point uh, when the computer doesn't know what to do with the projection or the data that you've encountered and it won't line up and you have to figure out why. And so this is, this is an, an occasion when you might need uh, to deal with it. Um, so there are projections. They are uh, a real issue that goes on in the process of map making and cartography. They tend to be invisible in a GIS, but they're nevertheless very real, and you should be aware of them.